So we're joined by Mike Moroney, uh, Chief Executive of Farm and Forestry Contractors of Ireland. Uh, Mike, the FCI has issued um, kind of guidance fact sheets on health and safety this silage season. Uh, what are your main concerns at the moment with COVID-19 and that whole situation? Well, you know, as farm contractors are, are part of the essential services on farms at the moment, there's quite a lot of activity and there will be more, say, this week as the weather improve, as has, continues to improve and into next week as well when the silage harvest gets under full swing. Uh, and then maybe maybe two or three weeks later because the baling tends to always be a little bit later. So there's a good deal of, of activity taking place on farms right across the country at the moment. So it's important that as essential workers, that people who are visiting farms all the time, that contractors adhere to some of the guidelines as given by the HSE, and then we've interpreted them to try and suit the needs of contractors on the move as we as we go through these couple of weeks. So I suppose the basic things are are to adhere to you know the basic concepts of the two meter spacing, so as to make sure that you know contractors and operators in the team don't uh, meet up within two meters of each other. And also there's a, the important, you know, the basic hygiene messages are, are the same in essence, you know, that certainly that we've advised people, all of our guys to make sure that they disinfect the, the tractor cabs once a day at the end of the day, and that they have a set of disposable gloves in place. For example, simple stuff, if guys are opening gates, it's very easy to follow a basic hygiene procedure and that. And, and we've issued, you know, a series of signs, signages, stickers for tractor cabs. We sent out in excess of a thousand of these for all around the country, a couple of thousand. And the idea is that if farmers are, meet the contract or meet the, one of the guys in the tractors drawn in the silage or whichever, that they're, they're reminded of the fact that they need to keep the distance and they're reminded of the fact that if they need to contact somebody, they ring a mobile number and that mobile number is written on that sign on the door. So it's it's look at it's to manage social distancing in a practical sense on farms at a very, very busy time of the year. And it's to give people guidelines on that. Now we also put together sort of a suggestion thing in terms of fact sheet, what a contractor should do in terms of contacting the farmer in advance. Because, you know, there is a tradition, and so it, it has always been a welcome tradition that contractors and the guys get fed on many farms across the country. And we don't want to break with that. And, and it's an important part of the process of being able to move through the day. So, you know, it's important that the contractor will ring the customer and at least have a discussion about how we're going to manage feeding people when they're on the farm. You know, practical, keep it practical, keep it quite simple. And most people are willing, and and we found a huge willingness among contractors and, and their drivers to take up that kind of information um, in, in the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And Mike, uh, what can uh, farmers do to facilitate contractors in uh, making all this a bit easier? Well, I, I think, the, you know, in, in saying that, and, 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 and I'll come back to it again, is they, they just need to be aware of the fact that, look, Guys are coming into a yard by and large, just traffic management issues that need to be in place. Gates would need to be in, in place to facilitate it. And even in advance, you know, it's, it is really worthwhile to maybe take a walk through the silage fields, particularly at headlands, to make sure there's no obstacle that's likely to damage the machine. Because, you know, we are all concerned. I know parts deliveries are, are happening, but we're concerned that if you have a major breakage, of a machine that there may be delays in terms of getting that part into the country because you know a lot of the machinery parts are coming from outside the country so simple stuff like that uh, man managing the flow of traffic in around the farmyard agreeing a management pro procedure in terms of that and obviously I said earlier agreeing the issue with regard to um, feeding the guys if they're going to be there but there's also a really important one because at the moment you know children are off school because of the COVID-19 so on many many farms there are a lot of children at home and for them you know they're eight weeks at home now and, and there's probably a, a degree of boredom setting in and for them there's huge excitement attached when a load of machines appear in the yard and there's excitement attached to that so that really presents a new risk an additional risk to to we'll say a normal normal situation so it's really important that first of all the contractor would ask the farmer are there children on the farmyard and what strategy they will discuss as to how they're going to manage the the control or the, the minding of the children in in the farmyard in that situation because the temptations are huge having been locked in as the kids have been for such a long time so would that be then a, a specific issue that contractors and farmers would discuss over the phone the, the presence of children and if they're likely to be there 
Yeah, they, they would, and we've encouraged them to, to make that call, like not to presume anything to make the call. And and we've given them a checklist to take off. Just ask some of those questions, um, and and also ask you know questions that we'd like them to ask in in a normal year, such as you know are there low overhead ESB lines? Is the pit is the silage pit near an overhead line? And we've given some uh, advice in terms of distances, etc., that you can build a silage pit. And and if there is an issue, and if there's a serious concern about that, you know we have a contact number for ESB networks, and they will go and, and help out in a situation like that. And we've developed a good rapport with people in ESB networks. They're conscious of it, and very conscious of it, and they're very much aware that modern silage equipment has got bigger. And, and therefore the risks associated with overhead lines are higher as well. So the number of factors, they are factors that take place in a normal year, but the children is something that is a major concern, particularly in a year like this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose you you would probably uh, stress that, you know, even with the concerns around COVID-19, it would be important and vital to not lose sight of the physical safety issues that you would have year on year. Uh, yeah, uh, of course, and it's re that's really important, and and that's an ongoing. You know, th there's the we call them the normal stuff that happens every year. The, the requirements in terms of of loading the pit, the safety requirements around that, and obviously the management of tractors, trailers, and keeping stuff in order. I'd say that given the weather we've had, and while we had a really wet period, you know, up up until the end of February, really, um, there was a lot of work done in in March and April that nobody would have anticipated would have happened by February, by in February, for example. So as we came into the silage, you know, in the last couple of weeks, when we look at the Facebook pages of, our, of a lot of our members around the country, you know, it was almost like they were at Mandela Park, Brands Hatch, they were ready to go, waiting for the flag to to drop, because you could all the guys were posting photographs of tractors, trailers ready for action. And by and large, contractors are good to prepare machines. Generally, they'll have them in good shape. Um, they're prepared for, they know that they don't really want to have downtime and they know that they need to have the gear in good order. So this year was interesting because like the maize planting sowing season was actually finished on about the third week of April. Normally that would be still going on at this stage. Um, a lot of potatoes were planted well in b before the 1st of May, which was fantastic and a bit unusual. And I suppose now at this stage, all those people are looking for a bit of rain, but it did help uh, in terms of being prepared for silage, having machines in good shape and good order. Uh, and that's something that has to be repeated every year. But this year, the issue around around children is, is an important issue and you couldn't emphasize it enough. And I suppose finally, Mike, um, kind of on diesel prices, uh, the price of oil has kind of dropped noticeably in recent times as a result of COVID-19. But meanwhile, at the same time, the uh, six euro increase in the carbon tax began at the beginning of this month. Uh, taking those two kind of opposing factors into account, what will be the kind of impact of all that on contractors in the coming weeks and months and even further down the line? Yeah, the, the, like we the concern in terms of diesel is is look at everybody appreciates the fact that diesel is cheaper this year than it was last year, um, but I suppose it's easy to forget that it was very expensive last year, and and there was huge costs associated associated with that. Um, but week on week, diesel prices do change, and one week it creeps up five or six cent a liter, and it might drop two or three the week later. Uh, but the consumption levels are still high. And, and overall, it hasn't the most significant impact. Like when we look at the running cost of a tractor, for example, the most significant aspect of that is the cost of labor. You know, that, that's more significant than the cost of fuel. And that's not to, to, you know, play down the importance of the fuel. It is important. But we look at other factors like lubrication oil hasn't come down in price. Diesel has. And uh, spoke to one of our members only last week. A replacement filters for for a, a, an industrial loader on a silage pit is 850 euro for the filters alone not to mind the lubrication of it so those kind of costs haven't changed uh, the one cost that has changed is is the diesel fuel and in the running of a tractor cost it's probably somewhere like eight or nine percent of the total cost you know it can be significant but it, it's not the overall it's not the major cost so there are other costs and we look even in the last you know five six years the purchase price of tractors and machinery hasn't gone down. It has continued to creep upwards. So there are additional costs associated with that. That, And in that period of time, and in, even in a period of, of almost since we changed from the punt to the euro, and in many people's eyes and years, that's, that's very much history now at this stage. The actual charge guys were charging for silage on a per acre basis for pit silage 
hasn't changed greatly. Uh, but then when, when we were like yeah, last year, a big heavy crops of grass, then bale silage, where contractors are paid per unit produced rather than per acre, you know, there are some advantages financially for them in a situation like that. So in essence, you know, in an ideal world, if, if we could do that, uh, silage would be charged on a different unit basis than a per acre basis. Yeah. Mike Moroni from the FCI, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks for having me on, Charles. Hi, Aidan. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, I suppose just going to have a chat about um, TAMS and just, I suppose, the backlog of applications that we've seen over the last number of months, even dating back to last year. Um, I saw there in, in the last tranche there was um, a total of 3,437 applications and there was over 600 of them rolled over from the previous uh, scheme or previous tranche. That's going to get worse again um, with COVID-19. I suppose, what are you seeing on the ground, um, Aidan? Yeah, look, uh, I've been inundated, I suppose, with phone calls for, for, from farmers um, that are very interested in going for grants where they may have not gone for grants in the past. I think they see with the COVID and with the way Europe is at the moment that um, this might be an opportunity for them to possibly get grants. Um, like probably looking down the, the barrel of the gun, there'd probably be no grants or, or, or great availability of money from Europe for possibly 10 years again. So a lot of clients that may have, had no interest in going for a grant or possibly going in for a grant now on the back of maybe not getting money again for a long time. And I suppose a lot of people that were sitting on the fence now are probably come, coming out of the, the woodwork uh, to also utilise grants. Yeah, because look, obviously like, like some farmers wouldn't have had money until now maybe and they just said, you know, the last year that this would have suited them to start building. Would you have seen a lot of that? Yeah, look, the, 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 there would have been a lot of cl clients of mine that would have been building up over the last couple of years where may, they may have not used um, grants and, and they were hoping to utilise them at the end or give them the opportunity that if they could, they'd utilise them. But they may not. Like with the grant scheme, you can sign up for a grant. There's no um, issue there. You don't have to use it and there's no penalties uh, awarded to you for it. So I'd have clients that would sign up for a grant and may not use it, if you know what I mean. Like the example would be that if a man was thinking about buying a bull tank, he might put in a grant for it. But at the time, if he was able to buy a second-hand bull tank at better money or if another opportunity arose, he wouldn't utilise the grant and he'd leave the grant go. And that would have happened up along. And that was, I suppose, a bit of a pitfall for the scheme because yeah. if, if a man utilize, was to do that, he'd tie up money. Say if he had authorization of 30000 he'd tie that up for 12 months. You know what I mean? Um, like the other thing is that I've been inundated, I suppose, with phone calls uh, uh, of new clients and other people trying to get get in and get grants going. And I'd say that'll be the way till this grant round closes. Uh, the only uncertainty is whether it'll be extended. Um, like at the moment, they extended the last grant round, but to be honest, it's of no great benefit because all the planning uh, permissions have been holded as well. So as, as we stand today, no planning application can be granted. Um, uh, and the planning process is um, just frozen. So like any extension to the grant scheme is no, of no great benefit to, to anyone that's in the planning process at the moment. And I suppose, Aidan, um, over the last couple of weeks, you know, we saw um, it was well documented that farmers were, were anxious to get um, silage slabs put up for the silage season that was just kicked off, I suppose, this month. Would you have seen a lot of that? Yeah, look, I I'd had a lot of clients that were very, very uh, anxious at the very beginning um, when, when the lockdown came in because uh, predominantly March and April and early May would be the big time for silage pits. Most builders won't go out until that time of the year because it just suits. And farmers need to get it in, to be honest, before May, because this, the, the, that slab with walls needs to sit there for at least six weeks to, 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 to cure. Um, and there was a big rush on it. A lot of builders were ringing me earlier on in April to see, could they get concrete? What was the protocol? I wasn't able to answer them. It did come out. Uh, luckily enough, the minister did come out and uh, allow uh, half sheds and, and silage slabs. But like moving forward, the big thing... And I suppose we are going to open up the builders in the next two weeks, but there's guys that really need to get going there. I have a lot of clients getting into milk next year. They're new entrants. They're putting up milk and parlors, cubicles. The, the, a lot of them have the stylish pits up, but they, they realistically need six to eight to 12 months to get these projects completed. Like, And they don't have it now. And like, we're in the middle of May now. 
most of them guys that are putting up bigger operations will be lucky to have winter accommodation ready for cows in November. And that could be catastrophic for them. Like, they, they have two and three and 400 cows on the ground and accommodation hasn't started as of yet. It, it looks like, like just from now, like that, you know, they've rolled over the last, the last tranche and this one. It looks like it'll roll into 2021, won't it, Aidan? I'd expect it. Like, the only fair thing to do would be to extend it. Like, if you take the coronavirus coming into Ireland, like, corona, to be honest, will probably take six months out of most people's lives. And that's a conservative estimate, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, like, in all honesty, the, the, that, this trench was meant to end uh, the back end of this year, 2020. If they could extend it out to the middle of 2021 uh, or at to the end of it, if you give people breathing space, and it'll probably take all the pressure off the, the, the planners like myself, the county councils, and farmers. Because at the moment, it, it seems to be just a race to get in for these grants and, and to yeah. utilise them. Whereas this is what the, the TAMS was organised to stop was to stop all this rollover and stop it, but they haven't. Like, they, they've they created a bottleneck again for themselves. Like, 20% were rolled over um, after the last tranche into this one. Like, they said there'll be another 20% rollover. That's nearly 700 um, applications. Like, that's a huge amount to, to have to even, just even, you know, process. It was. Like, they, they, they designed it. Well, the, the, the plan initially was to design this in such a fashion that there wasn't, wouldn't be rollovers and there wouldn't be panic. Um, and But it hasn't seemed to work. Um, and maybe it should be maybe retaught for the last two tranches, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, maybe take away the date, maybe leave, leave grants open till middle of next year. And as uh, um, applications come in, validate them and get them done. The, the, the possibility of putting a timeline on them and get a grant in and, and work on them to a date, that's not ideal. Like, So possibly maybe they need to just look at change in the end of the scheme. And I suppose, I suppose another thing is, it, we, we touched on as well, like, you know, the number of applications seems to be sort of increasing as time goes on with this scheme. Um, it looks, that's probably not helping either, that there's more farmers, I suppose, coming, they're coming to the end of the scheme and they're just saying, right, I'm going to throw my name at the hat and try and get a grant. That's probably not helping sort of the backlog as well, like, well, that's it. Um, and if there's no clarification on this, I suppose sooner rather than later, people won't know what's going on. Um, so like if if the department came out and said, look, lads, we, we're going to say it'll be the middle of next year or it'll be the end of next year. That's the date. There's no um, no rush on people. Take your time. That would, would would make it a lot easier for farmers to say, right, look, we, we'll get through the next three to four months and we'll look at it then in, in next January, if you know what I mean. Like, it'll be very tight if they only had six months to it. The planning process is four to six months, so people need that time just to get planning. Then they, need, they, they, they can apply for a grant. So, like, six months is very, very tight, but again, it, it'd be a big help to, to the likes of myself and other people in the industry trying to get farmers going. And even just to give the farmers some, you know, some... I just peace of mind that you know where they stand. I suppose you know a lot of them are, I suppose, worried. Like, like that's it. Like at the moment, I suppose they 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 have enough on their shoulders trying to worry about COVID and trying to manage the farm. And this is going to come into the very busy time of year as well. Like we've just come out of breeding, or sorry, Jeez. we've just come out of uh, calving. We're in the middle of breeding. Silage is going to come next. Like farmers for the from from the start of the season probably out to August. Uh, August is very busy for, for, for the dairy farmer and lots of other farmers, if you know what I mean. And mm-hmm. later on in the year, they have a bit of time. Kind of August to, 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 to Christmas, they have a bit more time. I'm not saying they have a lot of time. But it, it, that kind of breeding space, maybe, and leave them get over this busy period. And between lockdown and stress and other things, they won't have to worry about it. Yeah, and then we also think, I suppose, the financial thing as well, the financial side of things, like farmers might not have the money to, to do this building either. Look, I suppose that's that's the critical thing. Milk has taken a major plunge and probably is going to get in this month. Um, and if that keeps down, uh, on a downward spiral, farmers aren't going to have great money. Like, and again, maybe this is an opportunity. To, they're like they're all talking about stimulus packages. If they if they push it out a bit further, there'll be a bit more building going on. Like, even like a, a, as a great thought, if they could push it out for two years and and if they could supplement with a bit more money the farmers will build they've always built even in recession the farmers have kept this country going so like if they could elongate this scheme that would mean that that the agricultural industry would be would be building away and there'd be an uh, an industry there as well so like there could be um i suppose merits in elongating it and pushing out builder that would keep the 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 builders i suppose busy to keep myself busy to keep a lot of industries busy just concrete or steel you know and maybe that's the way that they could stimulate the, the, the rural economy to keep it going thanks very much Aidan for joining us again this morning appreciate it perfect Michael look we'll talk to you again